Hey, today I want to talk about why you can't do the carnivore diet. Really, you can replace that statement with anything that you want to do. You can do this or you can do that. Carnivore diet is not the thing that is the issue. The reason why you can't do something, can't do the carnivore diet, can't climb that hill, can't overcome this challenge. It's not because of the thing. It's because of the it. So what we're going to be talking about today is a bit about mindsets and the it and why people struggle with doing the thing that's going to get them the result they're looking for. Anytime I use the words carnivore diet or anything about carnivore, just replace it with anything that is the task that will get you the result that you're having a hard time doing. Because it, what, what I'm talking about is a little bit more broad than just the carnivore diet. It applies to all sorts of activities in our life. And don't tend to think that I'm naturally talented at any specific thing. I didn't come from a childhood or a life of privilege. In fact, I'd say that growing up, we were pretty poor. Both my parents were felons and we didn't really have a lot or a stability or encouragement and education. Now, my parents, as a child, my perspective was they loved me. It was cool and all, but there was not really this foundation of anything that uh, created an environment for support and giving us the upper hand in anything. But what we did have was some struggle. And I think that struggle, because no matter what happens in the day, tomorrow will come, unless you're no longer on earth, was that everything that was hard in life, the next day would come. And we had to find a way to keep waking up every day and when you woke up that day, you had to make a decision. Am I going to do the right thing or am I going to do some bad things? And a lot of people did bad things and they'd end up in jail or they'd end up um, addicted to drugs or whatever it was, right? And people that made good decisions found themselves on having a better life, more success. And so with that, I believe a word resilience comes about. Resiliency to keep on going through hard times and challenging difficulties and obstacles and not giving up. Because you've been cold, you've been tired, you've been in pain, but you know tomorrow is still going to be here and life is going to hit you in the face all back over again. But because you're not going to give up, it's better to find something you can do to make life hitting you in the face a little more soft or gentle or not hurt as bad or whatever it is. And some people go in the direction of bad things and some people go in the direction of good things. I tended a little bit more on the line or the side of the line that was good things, healthy things for me. The place I did mess up a lot was on my diet and my fitness and things of that nature. Luckily, the military helped me with the fitness side, the diet side. I was still in control of, and I really pushed it to the limit at times. But even though I was able to be resilient and get through things mentally and not make bad ethic, a lot of bad ethical decisions, I had some sort of guiding light. With that resiliency to keep on going, you also need to stack in their discipline. Discipline to keep doing the thing that you don't really want to do, but you know is the right thing to do. You see, while I was in the military, I was going to combat, and I had to work out, I had to train, and there was two reasons I had to do it despite me not really wanting to do it. One, you know, I was going to go to combat, so I better be better than the enemy that I was going to fight. And two, if I don't do it, I'm going to get in trouble. I mean, it's my job. If I just don't show up to the exercise, I'm, I could go to jail or what, I don't know, that was the extent that I thought, but if I just didn't show up, like what would happen? I, I wouldn't, I, I'd be in trouble, right? And so there were some things that 
you know, discipline was required to keep doing the things you didn't want to do. The problem is, even if you do have a resiliency to keep on going and you have the discipline to do the thing when you see that the, the punishment is going to outweigh the not doing the thing, you have to be accountable to somebody. But sometimes the only person that you can be accountable to is yourself. So now you need to add this extra layer of accountability. You have to hold yourself accountable and discipline yourself when you don't meet the expectations. And you have to be resilient enough to keep doing it day in and day out. All right, so the accountability means you need to set a standard. You need to set a standard and you have to commit to a decision. How do you commit to a decision that you don't want? I mean, you're the only one that's forcing yourself to go be on a diet, to go be on, only eat meat for the rest of your life. How is it that you're going to make that decision? I mean, one, you have to really believe that you that it's that it's the best thing for you, or at least worth trying. Maybe for the rest of your life is too big of an initial commitment. Maybe you just try a month or ninety days, but you have to commit to something, and then the discipline is what makes you go through it. I've been doing that. I'm on day 230 something right now. I made this commitment that I would do 90 days. I held myself accountable. Nobody else. They said, I don't know how you can do it, right? I was accountable. I I, I said I would start my tracker all back over if I messed up. That was the, that was the, that was a punishment. Along with also telling myself that I'm a failure and I couldn't do it and getting down on myself and all that stuff. And so I was disciplined, but I kept to my promise to myself. But what's the thing that gets you to make that commitment? That's what I want to talk about. And it took us a long time to get here, but I want to share with you an exercise that I go through with myself. Because there's a lot of things in my life that if I would have been the way I was taught to be growing up, I don't know, I could have a job making almost minimum wage. I could be a deadbeat dad. I could be very much out of shape. I could um, I could be into drugs. I mean, I've never smoked pot before. I mean, never, not once. I mean, I mean, that's not something like that's amazing, but a lot of times when I meet people, we ever come up in conversation that's like something weird. But there's a lot of different elements in my life that if I would have made different decisions and not be committed and not be disciplined that my life could have taken a completely different direction. The one thing that I always struggled with was my diet. So in all the scenarios that I've been able to hold true to this line, I wasn't doing it in the diet. And here's the thing that I would do. And it's, you've heard of it before, but maybe used in a different practice. And it's called making a pros and cons list. Oftentimes when we're talking and discussing having a pros and cons list, we're talking about two two decisions. And uh, one side of it is, you know, here's what's going to happen. And here's the other side. Here's what's going to happen. And we're kind of debating which one we should do because it's such a hard decision of what we should do. And we don't know, right? And make a pros and cons list. And the one that has... The longest part of the list is the decision we go with, right? If you take that same practice and apply it to starting a diet, whether the diet is carnivore, vegan, um, counting calories, whatever it is, the pros are always going to outweigh the cons. And so you'll end up with this huge list of all the benefits of getting healthy. And you'll have a very, very short list, if anything, other than like it's hard or I won't be able to eat ice cream or something that's insignificant and and worth giving up for all the pros that you would get. Longer life, be able to see my family, uh, see my kids grow up, uh, be in better shape, be more attractive, whatever it is that, that it is that you're wanting. And even the small things that you want, but don't really matter that much. Uh, like me, like I, I want to get a six pack. I, I've never had one. I'm getting close to one. I recently started a new workout re- regimen and I'm going to get there someday. It's my commitment to myself and I'm going to be disciplined and I want to do it. Right. Um, but 
you have to make this list of all the things. And so that whenever you get to a point where you're about to give in, the it that you want, the side of all the pros, has to outweigh the cons by a lot. If you say, I want to start a carnivore diet, what are the cons? Well, I won't be able to eat green beans. Now, that's not that big of a con, now is it? Now the other con. Well, I might, I'm not going to be able to eat frosted flakes or chocolate chip cookies or something like those are the those are the cons that you're gonna have now you might start thinking well i don't know if it's healthy for me so then you go do some research and you say wow there's hundreds of people that have been doing this carnivore diet and they've documented all the benefits that they've gotten so yeah, it seems pretty healthy well i guess i can't put that in my cons list anymore so now really the only cons you have is I don't know, the same thing the pothead might have. Pothead says, well, I don't want to smoke, stop smoking pot. I like smoking pot. I don't want to stop eating ice cream. I like eating ice cream. That's the benefit of not doing the diet. But all the cons are shorter lifespan, overweight, autoimmune diseases, all the different things that you've learned about about the carnivore diet. Now remember, I'm using carnivore diet in place of anything that you can apply that to life. Anything you're struggling with on you know the right thing to do. I want to pause for a second and talk about this motivational speaker that I've heard speak one time. His name is Eric Thomas, hip-hop preacher, E.T. He's got a few different names. And if I remember right, he was on a Steve Harvey show. And he explained, uh, somebody asked him about, you know, being able to get up on time. They go to, to school uh, and they just, they have a hard time getting up on time. And his, the way that he approached the conversation to kind of prove to the person that they don't have a hard time waking up, that it's something else, I think is the, is the same thing here. I just want to try to share the story with you. He said, what time... I'm, I'm paraphrasing all this because it's been years since I, I, I've listened, so I'm just going to act as if I'm him and tell the story. He asked the kids, what time do you have to get up for school? Seven o'clock. So you have a hard time waking up by seven o'clock. You miss your alarm, so like that. He says, yeah, I'm okay. Now, if I asked you to be at the gas station at three o'clock in the morning, and if you were on time, I'd give you $2 million. You think you can be there on time? And the kid in the crowd said, yeah. And then E.T. said, so it's not that you can't wake up. It's that the thing that you're waking up for, you don't value or you do value. The $2 million was a priority to you. But going to school... It's not a priority. You don't value it as much. Because if you did, you would be just as motivated to get up, get to school on time, because it's valuable to you. Now, again, if you go back and find that story with E.T., it, it's going to be completely different because I don't remember all of, of the actual details. I just remember the elements of the story. Uh, so it's going to be the $2 million and the time and the gas station. That, that all is just me trying to take the elements and put it into my own story. But the point is, is that you have to make this thing, the hard thing. The end result has to be so good that you're committed to doing it. And when you wake up in the morning and you want to go eat a bowl of cereal or have a donut or whatever it is, pertaining to the carnivore diet. You've got to know that the end result is so much better and that you want it so much more. And if the it isn't big enough, your discipline is going to falter. And you won't be able to hold yourself accountable. And then there's going to be a chance that you're going to spiral and your resiliency is going to falter. This is something I, for myself, have had to become obsessed with. Because I don't want to give myself any other option other than success. And I've been in the position of wanting to start a diet. I've 
to, to believe me again, I want to remind you, I've struggled with my weight. And before I was at the way that I'm at now, which is still not where I want to be, I was 80 pounds heavier. And I remember thinking to myself, Monday, I want to start this diet. And Sunday, I would binge. And Monday, I wouldn't start that diet. Then I would go into this endless cycle of Monday, I'll start it. And then Monday, not starting it. And I was, ah, well, today's Tuesday. I can't start the diet. And then again and again and again and again. I had the desire, but I never really thought out everything that needed to be thought out. I wasn't meticulous about it enough. I didn't think on it enough. I didn't commit to it. And so I, I'm saying the same words over and over again. I don't know how to get it farther into connecting with you. So if this isn't resonating, I mean, you watch this far to now and you're still kind of not really sure what I'm trying to say, please give me some feedback in the comments because I want to connect and I want to resonate and I want to share. Um, I don't want to just, I don't want to always just share the technicality of like, you know, can you drink coffee on the carnivore diet and things like that. I want to have a, a different kind of relationship with you. Out, even outside of the carnivore diet, I want to talk about more things. Uh, starting this jump rope challenge, I think that, you know, potentially talking about that with you and even getting broader into like uh, career and things like that, potentially someday. Uh, maybe that'd be cool. But mindset right now around the carnivore diet or any diet that you're going to be starting, tell me, what are you feeling? What are you thinking? And real quick, two more things. In the description of the video, there's a link to a free ebook that's specifically about the carnivore diet. If you're interested in the carnivore diet, you can go there and learn the basics in that ebook. And then two, if you liked the format of this video, the kind of vibe and style of like mindset type stuff, then um, I made a video a while back talking about overcoming fear and the experiences that I had in the military and how that kind of influenced uh, that. And you can check that out right over here. Uh, I hope they have a nice day, and um, I hope to hear more about um, some feedback about the about this video. Yeah, so take care, and I'll see you soon.